Chronographs are some of the most popular watch types, and with good reason. They look great and are very useful when you need to time something. As automatic chronographs are generally quite expensive, quartz-based chronographs give you that look and functionality for a lot less money. And guys, I think I found the ultimate quartz chronograph, and it costs less than $300. Stay tuned. Hello internet friends and welcome back to the Quality Time channel. As always, my name is Lester and I'm super excited to share this particular piece with you guys. I've been trying to put this review together and now it is finally here. Anyway, let's get started with a little bit of introduction. Now Casio is one of my favorite watch brands and they have really taken over the digital quartz market with their wide range of watches. They have so many different models. They are an absolute giant, and that makes, that makes a lot more than just watches. They also offer electronics from calculators to keyboards. And they offer, watch, offer watches from $10 all the way into the thousands. And for many people, you don't really need more than one of those $10 pieces to tell the time. So as I was browsing for a new Casio, I really wanted one with a uh, atomic clock syncing. And what that is is like uh, they can receive radio signals from the atomic clocks around the world to set the time automatically for you. And this is a very useful function. I've uh, owned Casios with this function before, and I, but I wanted one that looked more like a traditional timepiece. Now I considered the Edifice line of watches, which also a lot of them have this function, but a lot of them. Uh, are very busy. They, uh, they're they also quite large at usually at 42 millimeters and above. And so I looked at their lineage lineup, which is a JDM or J J Japanese domestic market lineup. And this particular one caught my eye. And when I found that I could get one, uh, a hold of one with under $300, I just had to have it. Now I purchased this particular watch from a local seller here in Taiwan from a website called Shopee, which is like a, I guess, a sort of like an eBay style site. They sell a lot of different things on there and watches is one of them. I picked this one up for about 7,430 NT dollars, which is rough works out to about 270 US dollars at the current exchange rate. Now before we get started, let's do our customary wristwatch check. Today I am wearing my Steinhardt Ocean 1 Vintage Military 39. Uh, this one I just, I just did a review on this one. It is a, an homage piece from Steinhardt of the famous Rolex Milsub watch. And I think it just looks fantastic, wears really nice. If you want to check the re review of this particular piece, it is in the video description. All right, let's get started. Okay, as I mentioned before, this particular piece is from Casio and is part of their lineage series. Uh, this, uh, this line of watches is JDM, which means it's only meant for the Japanese domestic market, but you can also find this piece on uh, resellers like eBay. The lineage line I find has a lot of any digi models, which means that there is a small you know, digital screen integrated uh, among the analog hands. And also many of them uh, are solar powered, as is this one. I find that the lineage line is a little bit dressier than uh, the G-Shocks and Edifices. Edifices is a more sporty one. And of course, it's a uh, way more affordable than their Oceanus line, which is like their top of the line uh, models. So that's where I find uh, the lineage, lineage line lies. The picture skew of this watch is LIW M700 1A. JF. It is a chronograph watch. The case material is 316L stainless steel. You've got some vertical brushing on the sides, kind of goes from top to bottom. And then you've got a circular brushing on top of the case. The size you're looking at 39.5 millimeters. The case thickness is a very svelte 11.5 millimeters and you've got a very short lug to lug of only 46 millimeters and a standard lug width of 20, which is really nice. The weight when it's sized for my six and a quarter, quarter inch wrist is 112 grams. The bezel is fixed. 
and it is a uh, very high polished. It is a silver bezel, of course. Now you've got four pushers. Let's call it A, B, C, D here, and I will go through what all these buttons do. There's uh, so many functions with watches. This is one of the things I really like about it. You've got also a sapphire crystal on this particular Casio with AR coding, which is really nice to see. The dial is a dark gray sunburst, and you can see it's actually quite nicely done. They've actually this is actually where the solar, uh, the tough solar technology is integrated in, so they managed to integrate it very nicely into the whole design of the watch. Now, in terms of the hands, you've got uh, pencil hands for the hour, minute, and also the sub dial hands, and you've got a nice needle second hand ticking away right there. The indices are all applied. You've got double batons at the 12, 3, 6, and 9 positions, and single batons on the, uh, on the other hour indices. You've got also a printed minute track going around the, around the, around the perimeter. You've also got all the city names, city, uh, I guess, abbreviations for the world time function, which I will show you a little bit later. In terms of complications, there are quite a few. You've got uh, the three subdial, uh, subdials. The left one is uh, basically your day uh, display and also which mode you're in. Okay. The bottom is the 24 hour time representation. I'm filming this quite late. And on the right, you've got the world time function. You've got also a, a color match date window at the 430 position. Now what's the cool about this particular Casio is also you've got loom. You've got what they call Neo Bright loom. Casio's proprietary loom formulation, I suppose. And you've got it on the markers and also the, uh, the main hands. But the sub dials, the sub dial hands uh, are, are not loomed. The case back is a steel solid steel case back it is a screw down you see there's some etchings on there talking about all the different technologies and the fact that it is part of the lineage line you've also got a nice water resistance rating of 100 meters or 10 bar which is really nice inside is the casio 5174 module and uh, this is good so that if you know the module, if you never own a castle, if you know the module, then you can easily download one of their manuals and know how to operate this watch. There are many, many functions as I'll go through in a bit. In terms of power reserve, this is a solar powered watch. They call it Tough Solar, which means that at full charge, it can last up to five months. If it's in power saving mode, that same full charge can last you 23 months, which is a long, long time and it just charges in the sunlight or just normal light as you go about your day. One cool thing is that if you notice the second hand here, if it is in low power mode, it will start ticking uh, every two seconds. So that's when you know that it's uh, you know kind of running low on juice. And right now mine is, mine is not, so it's ticking normally at the one second interval. The band material is uh, 316 stainless steel. It is a solid, link bracelet okay um but uh the unfortunately i believe the clasp itself is stamped so you know, there's a cut a little corner there but other than that it's uh, you also got solid end links as you can see here so this, the bracelet is quite solid but you do have a stamped style clasp there the links themselves are push pin uh, and not screw links the clasp itself as you can take a look is signed on the top it's got a nice satin brushing as well but you only do get two levels of micro adjust on this particular clasp it is a double push button to point clasp as you can see here the operation is quite nice clicks in really solidly even though it is uh, a stamped clasp and in terms of warranty you're looking at a one year warranty from casio all right, so now in this portion of the video, I'm going to try my best to sort of explain the numerous functions of this particular watch. You can see that uh, you've got four pushers on the watch, and we're going to label this A, B, C, and D, uh, just like the manual, so you sort of follow along. Now, the first time mode is, of course, timekeeping mode, 
And here you can tell because the, uh, the left-hand dial is pointed at the today's date, which is a pointed at FR for Friday. You've got the 24-hour uh, time at the bottom, and you've got my second time zone uh, for the right-hand sub-dial. So this is the first mode, the timekeeping mode. Now, if I hit uh, pusher C, it's gonna, you're gonna see this, the second hand kind of go to the, go to the 12 o'clock, okay? And this one is going to be your stopwatch mode. So the, on the left dial, it's going to be the 1 20th of a second. You can see it's pointing to zero right now. The bottom is actually your current uh, you know, time in 24 hour format. And the right and dial, sub dial in stopwatch mode is going to be your hour and minute count. So all I need to do is start the stopwatch, just hit the B pusher. You can see this one's your 1 20th of a second ticking along. And it's nice because you can still tell what time it is currently. And in order to stop it, all I need to do is hit B again. Everything stops. That's, a, that's the time I timed. And I press D to reset everything back to where it was. All right, now from stopwatch mode, if I click the uh, C pusher one more time, you're going to see the left hand dial go to TR, which stands for timer. So this is a countdown timer function. In this mode, you can see the right hand uh, sub dial has gone to the five, the five minute position. This is going to be how long the kind of timer is going to be for. And in order to adjust this, all you need to do is if I want to advance the timer, if I want like a 10 minute, I can push this, the D pusher to the 10 minute position so that it will time for 10 minutes. And all I have to do is press this to start it. So this will be a countdown. You can see the second hand is going backwards as a countdown, which is quite nice. And of course, it'll let me know via alarm uh, once the timer is done. If I want to stop it and reset, I just have to press B again and hit D to reset it back. If I press, uh, use your A pusher to lessen the time that you need to set. So if I want five minutes again, I can just press it to here and D to advance the time. So this is how I can set how long I want the time for. Now, if I press it again, what you're going to see is it's going to go to DST, the left hand subdial is pointed to DST, which means that now we're in world time mode. So currently, what you can see is that the right dial is spinning along. And you can see that the second hand is pointed to LAX, which is where my current time, second time zone is set for, so LAX. Now, if I hit, I believe it's this one, yes, the D. You can see I can change the time zone. So if I want to in uh, New York City, if I pr uh, you can see that Ned, the second hand is not pointed to New York City. And that's the time New York City displayed on the right hand dial. Okay, same for the other time zones. So let's go to, I don't know, London. So this is London time. And you can see that the time here also moves to the current London time. Although this is a little obscured by the uh, the hour hand, but you get the idea. Now from the world time mode, if I hit the C pusher one more time, it's going to point to AL. And of course, this is your alarm function. So if we wait for the right sub dial to start spinning around, you can see that you can set the uh, alarm time uh, using the right sub dial. Now it's going to be stopping any minute now. As you can see, uh, right now the second hand is pointed off, which means that the alarm is not active and the alarm currently is set for midnight. But if I hit the D pusher, I can set the what time I want the alarm to go off. Let's say it's six in the morning, like this. And again, if I press, I believe it is B, is it not B? Ah, okay, if you press A, that means it will go off at 6 a.m. as I've indicated. Now, a B, I believe, changes the time as well. Okay, so this is where I can, B will kind of move the time back, D moves the time forward, so back to 6 a.m., and A turns the alarm on and off. So if I want to turn it off, I just hit A, turn it back on, it points to on. You can see from the chapter ring, and that's, uh, that's how it's done. And finally, let's take a look at the 
main function that I bought the watch for, which is the atomic the clock syncing. So from the alarm time, if I click it, hit the C push one more time, you'll see that the, the left hand sub dial points to the day again, and that's how I know I'm in timekeeping mode. And in timekeeping mode, all I have to do is hold down the A pusher. Let's wait for the uh, sub dial to stop rotating a little bit. Okay, so that's my time, my world time there. Let's uh, hit the, the A push for two seconds. You're gonna hear a beep. And uh, you see the second hand go to uh, point to R, which means ready. So this watch now is ready to receive the radio signal. And if this watch was positioned correctly as it is in the manual, you're supposed to put it you know, either outside or near a windowsill, then it would you know, start sinking. And if it were to receive the signal, this R, uh, the second hand will move from R and point to W for working, which means it is receiving the signal. So after a bit of time, uh, since I'm in the studio, not near a window, I don't think this will work. But in a minute, you're going to see the result of the syncing. In just a second here, we'll let it let it sort of work. Since it can't find the signal, what's going to happen is it's going to rotate. The second hand is going to rotate over here and uh, tell you either yes or no if it was successful or not. Again, there it goes. You hear a beep. It's pointing to N for not successful. So that means that it really didn't uh, receive the signal. But if, if it had received it and it was successful, you're going to see the second hand rotate all the way to the Y to let you know that it was uh, able to sync with the atomic clock. So what do I like about this piece? Well, as you can see, I believe it is a very classy looking chronograph with a nice clean design. It looks great. It's a very neutral color combination just uh, the dark gray with the white goes with anything and it's an absolute strat monster you've got a fully integrated solar cell in the dial and i think they've really come a long way in that in in terms of integrating that technology into the design of the watch you really can't tell it is a solar cell it just looks like a nice gray sunburst which is quite nice one thing detail i really like about this particular watch is the indices now as you can see i don't know if you can see here but they're actually suspended above the, the chapter ring here, as you can see, there's some depth there. It's almost as if they fix the, the markers themselves to the crystal and it's sort of kind of floating above the chapter ring. It's a little difficult to see, but it's a really cool effect, actually. You can see the shadow as I move the watch around of the indices themselves. They're casting a shadow above the dial. So they're sort of above uh, everything. It gives a really nice sense of depth. Neo Bright is really nice to have. It's a it's a Casio. It's a pretty decent loom, nowhere near like a Seiko, but it's there and it's it's quite bright for as long as it lasts. And I guess one other thing, the main attraction is so many different functions on this watch. It's incredible. You've got a GMT function, there's a stopwatch, there's a countdown timer, even an alarm. Uh, so you've got a lot of different functions uh, baked into this piece. And if it was your one uh, watch collection, I think that it would be completely justified. It does everything. You've also got atomic syncing, which means that this watch is always on time. And that's something even a lot of other you know, watches that are quartz but don't have that feature can, can really say because it really does sync to, to the atomic clock every night if you want. You've also got the tough solar technology, which means that it's really, you know, charging as you wear it and you don't need to mess with the winding and stuff like this. So it's a really great grab and go piece, I think. In terms of uh, the, the wear, it's really nice that this piece is a uh, nice felt 39.5 millimeters and suits us a variety of wrists. Uh, to contrast this with their edifice line, which starts at 42 and up. A lot of them are quite large. So, you know, I really prefer the smaller size of this piece. And you've also got a nice short lug width. Okay, so it really does uh, conform to the wrist quite nicely and doesn't overhang. You've got a solid bracelet as well. Pretty solid uh, with the female end link here for so that you have a nice drape. Uh, even though it does have a, you know, a stamp clasp and I'll go through that in the negatives. But the, solid, the bracelet itself is quite comfortable and very solid. Actually, in terms of comfort, this is incredibly comfortable when I compare it to some of the other bracelets in my collection. You've got a very thin profile as well, so it can fit under a cuff, no problem. Nice flat sapphire here with the AR coating, which is quite nice. And also 100 meters of water resistance so that you can go ahead and swim with it, no problem. One cool thing about this piece is that it does not have an integrated bracelet, which means that you can easily swap out the strap. 
and I've actually been enjoying this piece off the bracelet and on a Bond elastic NATO, which I quite like, and I'll show you a video of what that will look like. It's super comfortable in this particular uh, band, and I really like it a lot. So that standard 20 millimeter lug width gives you a lot of versatility with this watch. So what are some of the negatives? Well, there has to be some negatives, I guess. One thing I mentioned earlier was the stamped clasp. I mean, it's just not a really, you know, it doesn't give you a really sense of high quality in terms of the clasp. It's a, this part is very, very thin. It does work and doesn't bother you when you wear it, but it's just something that could have been improved perhaps with the milled clasps. And speaking of the clasp, it is, it does only have two micro adjusts, which means that it could be difficult for you to get a good fit uh, for this bracelet. And fortunately, when I size up this bracelet for my own wrist, it does wear a bit loose, but I'd rather have it a little bit loose than a bit too tight. Unfortunately, if they could just, you know, extend this bit, as a part of it, gave you a few micro adjusts, it would have been great. But as it stands, you only get two uh, micro adjusts supplied. Also, in terms of the bracelet, it's not screw links, of course, it also is only pins. So that's not ideal. Not too difficult to size, per se, but screws would have been much better. Also, one thing that, you know, in terms of the design, the date at the 430, which is pretty much the place that I really don't want to see the dates, but I, I see where, you know, there's really not much space to put it. It doesn't bother me that much in this particular design because it is color matched, but, you know, 430 is not my favorite. I, I would rather have it on the 6 for, for symmetry's sake. It doesn't have an LED light. Unlike a lot of their other models, it would have been a bit uh, more convenient if there was some sort of LED function here, but there is no LED light at all. You do have to rely on the Luma, uh, these not Luma Bright, the uh, Neo, the Neo Bright on the hands and indices. And also the sub dials are not loomed at all. So you will not be able to do anything but tell the time in the dark as the other functions you can't really see. The case back is actually not that well integrated. I don't know if you can see that on camera, but it's sort of just, there it's got a completely different finishing as well compared to the rest of the case and so it's sort of just kind of if you look at it right from the side here i don't know it just doesn't look that integrated to me uh, as part of the design itself it's just like a slab underneath the rest of the case uh, again it's not a big deal when you wear it you can't really see it but if you turn it to the side you sort of sort of notice that hey this this part of the case is not that well integrated because there is no digital display like some of their uh, other lineage models, some of the functions are a little bit hard to uh, interpret and you're going to have to do a little bit of study to figure them all out. As I've had a, even in this video a bit of a hard time trying to explain all the functions here. Um, I had to sort of review the manual to s explain it to you guys because there's just so many functions and they had to kind of consolidate all the functions into these three dials with the other hands. So, I mean, they did a great job. In that sense, they managed to meet all the all the criteria and meet all the, get all the functions there, but you need to do some study to sort of interpret it. But the good thing about having not a digital display is it does just look like a regular chronograph, like a Speedmaster or maybe your bull of a lunar pilot, lunar pilots. So it does it's a very handsome design, and I guess there's a trade-off in terms of usability and design there. But I think that you know once you get used to it, it's not really a big deal. And I guess finally. The one other negative I would say is that it is a JDM model, which means that it would be difficult to find outside of Japan. Fortunately, uh, at the time of filming, I did find this one available still under $300 on eBay. So I always uh, consider going there to, you know, uh, purchase this watch if you are interested. Well, conclusions then. If you guys have been paying attention to the review so far, you can probably guess that I really, really, really like this watch. I think Casu has put together a watch that checks to so many boxes and all of it for its sub $300 asking price. It blends together some very classic styling with a slew of technology and it does it seamlessly. The omission of the digital display may, you know, give the watch a bit of a learning curve, but I think the trade-off is worth it to maintain that classic uh, chronograph styling. Aside from the less than perfect bracelet, I really don't have many negatives to say about this watch. It's got excellent proportions. It's got standard lug, which means that you can easily swap out straps. 
You can put a leather on it to dress it up or dress it down with a NATO, which I've been doing. And so from the quality materials that they put in to the impressive array of features like the atomic clock syncing, the world time, there's even an alarm. This could really be the only watch you really need. Now, if you're looking for a handling style of quartz chronograph that you can just grab and go, guys, I really highly really recommend this Casio lineage. Alright guys, thank you so much as always for making it to the end of the video. Uh, if you did like the, the content, make sure to like and subscribe. And also let me know down in the comments uh, what you thought about this watch. Uh, what do you think about the, the Cassie lineage? Let me know. As always, my name is Lester and thank you for spending some quality time with me. Take care now.